What's going on, my creative collective? Welcome to your daily creative reading for August 22nd. <clears throat> we are going to hop right on in here. My esteemed colleague would like to welcome you to the reading as well. <laughs> Look at that face. My goodness. Anyways, okay, <laughs> let's do this. Spirit, what messages do you have for my daily creatives for August 22nd, please? August 22nd. With love. I'll read that first. Oh, that one came out too. More with love. Wow. Okay, lots of love. A lot of love. Okay. <laughs> Dear you, sometimes you just feel like no one understands you. You're not heard or even that you don't count. This, my dear, is a terrible illusion. And although your feelings may tell you that abandonment is real, while well, we who love you know better. You are never alone. And even when rejection happens, you're ultimately being protected so better things can replace what wouldn't have worked in the first place. Everyone on this side of the veil is watching over you and rooting for your ultimate success. Life loves you. Whoa, my left ear is like ringing. Like, oh, yeah. Um... Life loves you, we love you, and you are a unique spark of the divine and have and are always connected to, let me reread that, sorry, the ringing is like, it, it was so loud. Um, life loves you, we love you, and you are a unique spark of the divine and always connected to the light and to source. Trust and keep the faith. Love you always and forever. I love this. I love it, love it. Okay, let's dive in feeling a little protected today not protective but protected there's a difference in demeanor right there's a bit of a different demeanor look at this she's so depressed like she just has such a hard life <laughs> like hey baby girl what are you doing why are you so sad oh my gosh that's so funny Spirit, what messages do you have for my daily creatives, please, for August 22nd? Two of Cups. Some of the call to adventure here. Whoa. Okay, that's a lot. <clears throat> Let's just take a peek at this little storyline that popped out here. Oh, wow. Okay. So this is like, I got, this is like the beginning of the serenity prayer. And then this was like, and the wisdom to know the difference is what came out and the wisdom to know the difference. I don't even know what the beginning of that prayer is. Um, grant me this something to accept what, but that's like kind of what this is. Like, you know, the strength card, the wheel, uh, and then you have the sun and the 10 of pentacles, like, you know, like it's like accepting what can be changed and what can't as part of the wheel, the confidence to move forward on what you know, and the wisdom to know the difference between these energies and and what doesn't serve you, be it externally facing or inwardly facing. Wow. I'm putting those here because this is really important. Dang. Thank you so much, Spirit. That's beautiful. The wisdom to know the difference, right? The wisdom to know the difference. I feel like it's connected to this two of cups and not like the wisdom to know the difference between like what, like, I feel like one of the challenges that I face in terms of describing things in the tarot is, and not challenges as in, it's just, it's the way that it's worded, right? Because words have such a strong energetic thread to them. And I feel like it's just this sense of like disposability that can come across in terms of like, um, you know, the wisdom to know the difference and like cutting things out and off. It's like, you know, like there are times where I navigate and have to disconnect energy to understand something and then eventually come back to it, which can be read in the same way. But I just, I, there's something about that. Anyways, um, that's just my own thing. So it's just the wisdom to know the difference and having that come from a place of peace as opposed to a place of tension. It's like you're harmonizing some part of your energy, yourself, a relationship, relationships, period, priorities. I feel like this is more a harmonization card it is also a soulmate card so there's that too um 
Oh, this just fell out from the bottom. What is this? Six of Pentacles. Yeah. Harmonizing, right? Harmonizing energies. Let me just take a sip of my smoothie here. Queen of Cups. Definitely something to do with the heart space. But I feel like that is the wisdom to know the difference, right? Like you have to be connected in your heart center in order to know that difference, in order to feel that difference. Five of Pentacles, Knight of Swords, Queen of Wands. challenge the nine of swords i think this came out last week too death mm, beautiful love it love it love it death card is one of my favorites i say this all the time people get like if it, like for outsiders looking in would be like the death card that's morbid no 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 that is the smell of fall my friends that is the smell of autumn that's why i love it so much because it's just it's not just that but it's the transformation of seasons within you as well that shift in seasons Five of Wands and the Hanged Man. I think today it's about seeing the bigger picture. Oh, I'm going to have to disturb my cat. Watch. She just, she's so cute. This might give you a little chuckle. She gets very offended when you get like in her little space that she makes for herself. But don't we all get like that? Right, baby girl? Yes. Okay. It makes me chuckle a little bit because sometimes she'll give me like a glare like, what are you doing? <laughs> um, uh, okay. So... I am looking at this from the outset. I see the need to have a kind of bigger picture view of something. Because when you get caught in the details, the details are kind of where it ensnares you. And the reset energy here comes from the death card, right? That kind of um, reset. I, I Reset is the word that's coming through. Um, and because it's a major arcana, I feel like that that's more instructive. These are revelatory of the smaller details, but the instructive energies are are big picture transformation, right? So let's get into the other details though, and then that'll sort of flesh everything out. But keep in mind too that a significant number of um, of major arcana came out in this kind of wisdom to know the difference. And it's also wisdom to know the difference between the thoughts that you have about yourself too, right? What is it that's true of patterns and what is true of where you are versus what's true of who you are right Th those those thoughts right this um this weekend i have the fortune it's fortunate enough that um or i am fortunate that there's you know no one home so roommates are gone i have the whole house to myself i have tomorrow and the next day off so what i am going to be doing is just kind of spending time in a silent retreat of sorts you know I, i'm gonna message a friend and tell them you know i'm not gonna be in touch too much because we touch base about once a day um, and it's just sort of, um, wanting to put a reset on perspective. And I share that in case it helps. Like, I, I just find that sometimes we, we get in the habit of speaking about where we are to tell people around us where we are so that we can be comforted in that. But do we need comfort or do we need to be more silent about where we are so that we can connect to where we could be, right? And it's this possible versus impossible. I was, you know, flipping through YouTube this morning and I saw that in a title of Nicholas Ashbaugh's uh, Sagittarius reading. I didn't watch it yet. Um, I'm trying to kind of stay away from too many um, too much outside info at the moment, just because I feel like it's better for me to, uh, you know, engage in that reset instead of looking for comfort, right? Because comfort is important. But um, it's just sort of going into that reset, that that reset button, right? B putting that um, into effect. So I, I feel like, I don't know, I feel like there's maybe a reset of a different kind here. This this can also apply not just in terms of, um, you know, speaking and utterances and, you know, I my love of discourse analysis and Foucault, mm, chef's kiss, beautiful. But um, I feel a little bit like this is like exchanging, like this is a reset on exchanges. And that's not just discourse. That's not just words. It's so many other things, right? Like this is... Um, it's also about the exchange of energies. It's about the exchange of, um, you know, investment. Uh, it's an exchange of emotions. But I feel like this is reflective more of the inward turn 
Um, however, I feel like it's just this sort of, um, what does, what does exchange mean? You know, and, and I think it's like moving away from this transactional view of things. Um, cause I think that a lot of, uh, law of attraction discourse can get us into that position, which is true. Like you do, it's, it's cause and effect, right? But what, at what point do we allow, um, you know, cause and effect to then be supplanted by, um, transaction right so it's just understanding our own energy in there and that uh, that's coming through quite strong and it's not I don't know there's not a ton of cards that would indicate that but I feel like there's something deeper that's being connected to here the thing that could become a tower if it goes unchecked five of pentacles there's obvious reasons I think um as to why this could become a tower just you know a faulty self-perception um, and faulty just meaning that it's sort of like glitching in and out. Like there's a vision of where you could be, but it keeps like glitching. Like the screen just isn't connecting to where you need to be. Um, and I think this is the, that's that wisdom to know the difference. I feel like that might just be the title of this reading. Let me just write it down. Um, the wisdom to know the difference. Because I really feel like that's pretty poignant and potent too. Like, and these are potent energies, even though they're on the, you know, the, the minor arcana is more the everyday bit, right? But I feel like that's where things kind of come to life a little bit. Um, and perhaps a little bit more than what we would want to give them credit for or, or, or their due. Uh, so I think this could become a tower if it goes unchecked because it's so easy to get into this place of just constantly um, reiterating what is and, and where you are and the key is like right here right the key is in the corner right the key is in the corner so it's just kind of being mindful um your protagonist energy is the energy i think that you have and the clarity to to move like there's a and not a, it could be a physical move but i'm thinking of the, about this more as in like doing something and taking steps to to get something done um and sometimes when you don't know what steps to take this is the only thing you can do this is the only thing you can do you know um and it it strikes me well i shouldn't say it strikes me it occurs to me that um there's sort of an energy of like something cyclical here and the reason why i'm seeing cyclical is because the the sort of infinity loop behind these pentacles and then i'm also seeing this as less of a i think it's a pentagon shape um a pentagon shape and i'm seeing it more as like um like the like a wheel like uh, as if there were a belt moving across these keeping them in motion right a belt moving them and and so it's sort of this loop but i feel like it's sort of breaking with the loop is going to require a bit of a change of environment be it mentally be it physically so this could also be just a sort of a, a literal retreat that you're going on um the queen of wands is the antagonist energy um i think this is a bit about um, you know, don't let your, um, I'm so tempted to say like, there was, so this is, this is interesting. Don't let your instincts get the best of you. That's so fascinating. Don't let your instincts get the best of you. I'm going to clarify that very quickly. Cause I'm very, I'm curious as to what that means. Cause typically being in touch with your instincts is a good thing. So don't let them get the best of you. I have an idea, but I just want to clarify what that, what that means in this context here three two of cups queen of wands queen. oh that's funny the tarot's like mm -hmm. i'm gonna clarify the card with the card <laughs> Um, so it's the two of cups, the queen of wands and the king of pentacles. So if we're clarifying, um, the queen of wands, what I'm getting from this is don't let your instincts get the best of you. Um, I think that there's possibly connections or a connection, a significant connection. It's the two of cups. That's not that, that, that's not nothing. Um, it's a significant connection. And I think the important thing is to kind of ground your feelings, ground your emotions. The queen of cups is here, which is a strong emotional energy, um, grounding your emotions, uh, because there's a clarity. You will want to make a move on something. You will want to move on something. Um, I think it's kind of getting past your perspective, but past your self perception, um, 
and you know, this isn't a sword energy, but I see this as, you know, an invitation to invest in you, right? Like invest in you in terms of connecting to you in relationships, like connecting to you with work situations, with, you know, contracts, all of that. It's like, if you can't hold a clear vision of yourself and people see this kind of five of pentacles loop just going, it's not that it's not inviting, um, but it's like, you know, it, it becomes, it can be an energy of, um, reflecting that you're not taking care of yourself. And that's, it's not that that's like, that's a, a magnetic energy is taking care of yourself. And I've, you know, um, been in different situations where like different transitions have happened, um, aside from like the transition that I'm in. Um, but, um, it comes a point where you're aligning yourself to to make moves and it's like you're bettering yourself and you want people around you doing the same thing basically because the level that you're investing in yourself won't make sense and it's not narcissism and it's not it's not self-centered to the detriment of others around you you really do have to invest in yourself in order for life to make sense you really do like this is, you know, it goes back to not abandoning yourself. And that's what I think this is an invitation to do. And that's where it could become a tower is, you know, there's situations may occur where you're pushed to invest in yourself. You're pushed, you know, and, and it's not, it's just uncomfortable. <laughs> like it just feels like an itch that you can't scratch. Right. And, and you eventually do. Um, but it's just that discomfort, right? And, and life is meant to be one of ease. And I've experienced situations where I've, you know, I don't want to say put it off, but not done things because my awareness wasn't at the point of preparedness to heal, or there were a bunch of external circumstances. So I think that's where this can kind of reflect a need to ground your instincts. Um, because your instincts are also, um, that's not just a gut instinct, right? That's also a nine of cups was on the bottom and the hanged man too, unsurprisingly. Oh my gosh. It's so, I think a lot of big picture energy here, um, but it's important to ground your energy because it can kind of get carried away in the things around you. Um, if you're still kind of like a neophyte at going within or going within, or, you know, like if you have, for example, CPTSD or you've experienced trauma, um, what can sometimes happen is like this external, uh, looking outside of yourself because that's where your your you know neurological pathways are inclined to go don't berate yourself or beat yourself up for that because that's just it's it if it that is how it is fighting that is just going to kind of put you in a state of discord don't fight that go with the stream and say okay if this is what my feeling is and this is what my you know general assumption is about this situation what is the evidence that i have to support this versus another thought right so it's it's a lot of cbt and dbt um you know working with that uh, but nonetheless that's kind of where this instinct was coming through and i do think that there's a lot of mental chatter and mental chatter to your detriment uh you know that's what the nine of swords is um but i almost feel like this sort of um i think this came through in uh the friday last friday with the robes and and the reds right like this is like emperor energy almost like in waiting like emperor like latent emperor transformation towards um but i also feel like it's it's sort of like you're choosing like you can step into your power and be reborn because you already have everything you need you know like the only difference is what's within you right what's within you because the red robes are the same in both so you kind of this represents to me a way of saying that you know you have what it takes you have what it is that's within you so if you have what's if, you, if it's all there the only thing needing work is what's possible, right? This view of what's possible. So it's a perspective. And I think that that's sort of what this is calling you to take in. And I think this is kind of like climbing over and through some of the hurdles that you've put in your own path um, by virtue of wanting to avoid this nine of swords by virtue of, n and not even avoid, like, you know, and if, if, I don't know. I, I want to say like, I'm very big on being kind to yourself. So don't go like, you know, ham and say like, oh, it's, it's spiritual bypassing. You're the worst thing, blah, 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 blah. No, 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 no. If it is, that's fine. If that's the language that other people feel comfortable using, do that. But don't use that language as a way to disconnect yourself and berate yourself. Cause I get, I, I feel like, you know, for true for me and, and from a lot of other folks that I've read or watched or listened to or spoken to, um, we do, we're, we are, we are so good at being hard on ourselves. So I think this is about being a little bit easier on yourself and, 
I think that's where this is uh, this transformation can begin right let the hard be something that is external facing don't let the hurdles be something that are inside of you just to reach a point of inspiration just to reach an idea this shouldn't be, i mean we don't want to should on ourselves but why should this exist inside of you when it can be much easier right and it's like it's almost like reevaluating not just priorities but energetic priorities and how you've invested your energy in yourself right how have you invested your energy in yourself and this is kind of like an internal exchange um, it could be externally facing too, though. So if you if you're in a relationship, um, or so two things. If you're in a relationship, this could be looking at how things are kind of doled out, like who takes on what tasks, right? Chore charts, that kind of thing, um, or who prefers what, right? Like I I, ugh, I dishes and I I ugh, blah, 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 blah. I'm not a big fan. <laughs> I don't like hand washing dishes. It's just <clears throat> not my favorite. You know, so I will do something like clean all of the bathrooms or do whatever else just to not have to do that because I dislike it. But that's where it's like finding things that um, another good, uh, I guess, way of figuring that out would be asking the question, to whom is this most important? right? Who is this most important to for this to be this specific way? Because there's like, it's almost like negotiation, right? Like there's a lot of negotiating energies in, in part of this here. So I think it's part of the big picture, but let's, uh, let's dive a little bit deeper before we close this out. How are we doing for time? Oh yeah, 21 minutes. We're good. That's too many. I will say, though, that the Two of Cups came out again with the Six of Pentacles. I'll take those two. Um, sorry, Six of Cups, but the Six of Pentacles was here, too. Um, it could be some lover's energy um, with the Six. Yeah, I get that this is almost like asking yourself about emotional investments that you've made, um, you know, past, present, future, like ir uh irrespective of time um like six of pentacles six of cups like these like allowing something to take root emotionally i think first required you to invest in yourself a little more um because i feel like a lot of that energy is here but i think it also just nourishes your connections too it nourishes your connections as well You know what's coming to mind right now um thank you spirit is the quote that says like when you're when you know things are no longer being served don't be afraid to get up from the table but then how often do we turn that inward and say when's the last time that we served something that nourished ourselves and and i'm not just talking about food or nutrition or sleep or fitness or anything like the the tangible things i'm talking about like um genuinely self-loving and appreciating appreciative thoughts right those thoughts um yeah wheel of fortune on the bottom um king of wands mm -hmm. i think that's what's going to connect you to this sort of fiery a fiery movement forward like I feel like there's a clarity a momentum from clarity but then there's this connecting it to something more than that to a, a passion here because there's a lot of fire energy but in different forms right um, it's almost like catalytic fire as opposed to integrative and um, also uh, fuel like an, an empowering fire knight of pentacles you may have to do some work to earn your own trust <laughs> that's i i go back to these videos because some of them are really really helpful so um forgive me if i sound like this weird fan boy i don't know but then i'm meh. but um i don't even know uh, how to gender it because it's like fangirl fanboy but but about fan person just fan anyways um I stand, uh, but the, the Christina Lopes video where she talked about, um, you know, needing to earn the trust of your inner child, I feel a little bit like that's the sort of slow approach, right? The slow approach, um, 
Wow, that's like a depth of clarity right there. I felt that. Yeah, that definitely for sure. I heard a lock clicking open. <laughs> Page of Swords, yeah. I almost feel like that's how your inner child is responding right now. This is a little curiosity, a um, bit, little bit, little bit of curiosity here. But I also feel like it's like this curiosity um, from you. Like it's sort of like integrating that energy so that you can then kind of, you know, step forward in new ways, um, new ways that honor yourself, new ways that sort of that do honor um, all of you, not just like these sort of split parts that's like the the smart part of you the funny part of you the you know like no no that honor you like the whole thing so we have the queen of cups and the knight of swords spirit what messages do you have for my daily creatives for august 22nd please to clarify whoa a lot tried to come out here flipped in and out so we have some pentacle energy yeah i feel like there's like an emotional foundation that you're building um i feel like this is you coming kind of back into balance like there might have been a time where it felt like it was difficult to soar difficult to even get off the ground um and that's where this knight of swords energy is that clarity but also that movement maybe you were kind of in this i'm hearing stasis but i'm almost seeing this as like something like a cryo chamber or something like that decompression chamber i'm hearing as well which is really interesting because um so i was reading uh <laughs> um I have talked often about my love of sushi uh, on this channel, and I am never eating it again. Uh, and I, that sounds like a pretty bold statement, I know. Don't say never, but uh, I was reading this book. Let me see if you can see it without a huge glare. Um, it's called Salmon Wars. There we go. Um, and I, I'm i like, uh, nope. <laughs> Just the, but anyways, so when I'm, they talked about decompression chambers in one chapter, not related to salmon in particular. Um, but they, they were talking about decompression chambers in terms of if you rise too high. So if you go too deep, right, if you dive too deeply and then your oxygen runs out you, and you have to, you know, come to the surface really quickly, um, what ends up happening is your heart doesn't have a chance to adjust to the pressure, something along those lines. And so you can risk very serious damage to your heart. And it talked, you know, in the book, there was somebody that was interviewed that talked about this. That's what ended his kind of foray into maintaining salmon nets. But it was just an aside. But that's what I'm thinking here. It's almost like diving so deeply, you may need it, you may have needed or needed need to or have needed to give yourself a minute to kind of rise to the surface or like wait for the I think it's like three minutes or something like that is all it takes underwater possibly 10 to get yourself adjusted on the way up so it's not that much time but if you feel like you ran out of oxygen like if you feel like you're out of this fundamental building block of your life um, whatever that means to you and you tried to rise too quickly you have to spend anywhere from six to nine hours in a decompression chamber at a hospital because otherwise your heart could, you could cause, it, you give yourself a heart attack, you could do all of these things. So it's almost like you had to give yourself that time and that's where it's like coming back into balance. So it's almost like releasing um, like this, this pressure um, because the movement is there, the momentum is there. It's almost like you've just been in this sort of decompression chamber um, because you've been in a really pressurized part of whatever this emotional world you're in or intuitively too, right? Um, this is like needing to ground. So uh, yesterday or the day before, um, I did uh, a little bit of a cosmic library deep dive session and I did a lot of channeling there. And afterwards, my, my routine is to do a sort of grounding pose, a grounding yoga pose, have water touch stuff like I'm a I'm a love touch is one of my love languages right so um like I'm just like a squishy person like I just I I love that so you know petting my cat or curling up with her um you know like allowing her tail which is flicking right now um I don't know if you, yeah, you can see it but like allowing her tail to just like to to like putting my hand near it and just like letting her flick on my hand so that I can feel right and it's just like feeling that um 
nonetheless. It's like maybe a call to do some grounding as well. Um, and just understanding that there's, um, it's not, it's not something as deep as the void, but that can be it too, where you're coming out of, or if you're just emerging from a dark night of the soul, what can sometimes happen is you need that time. You need that decompression chamber. So just be patient with yourself. Um, be patient with yourself. Because I feel like this is the, the eight of pentacles here, which is not only something that's worth your time, but it shows like a depth of, uh, we think of pentacles here in terms of like length of investment uh, in terms of time. But I feel like this is a depth of investment in terms of um, space that you've given yourself. Uh, and then I'm getting here that this is like the beginning of a really solid foundation for you, creatively speaking, uh, you know, in relationships, there's something that you needed to decompress from. And it's not like, you know, you can have events and decompress isn't just like, oh, my people battery is low. It's not just like that because I get like that, too. But it's it's also that you needed to um, like we don't tend to think of like mountains and oceans, right? We don't tend to think of, or, you know, and I think of ocean cause that's one of the few places where you dive like that, but, um, probably can do it in lakes too, but it's just, well, you can't do it in lakes. I don't know what I'm saying, but anyways, um, it's just, it's almost like you might have felt landlocked, but what was actually happening was you were coming up from a depth within you that required, that required this sort of, um, I'm almost seeing like in Infinity War, the Marvel movies where they were like splitting apart, right? And where did they go and exist in between that time when they, um, you know, came back together to when they split apart. And it's not about breakups or anything like that. This is about you kind of um, sort of fragmenting and then re like coming back together energetically. So it's almost like, I mean, I don't know, um, all of the, like, I know that there's a lot of, um, science, you know, that would caution, you know, the uh, Hadron Collider as well as, um, things that are more, um, on the sort of quantum sphere of um, concerns that aren't necessarily proven yet, but that are more anecdotal that, that do bear some, you know, caution. So it could be something to do with that. Cause I kind of see that sort of chamber like thing in the background, decompression chamber too. That's what I see with this, but also an ace of pentacles. So there's possibly an opportunity um, that is coming in terms of your awareness from that time, right? From that time. The Queen of Wands, a spirit, what, uh, can you clarify this Queen of Wands for me, please? The truth. I feel like this is so fascinating. Um, there's something here about following your instincts, but understanding that not jumping on them, like don't be impulsive about this, whatever those instincts are, if you're like, yeah. That's the thing. That's the person. That's the one. That's the this. That's the whatever. That that like pulling back to take an, a wider view, you know, and having ADHD and CPTSD, I often get into places where I have to do this with myself, right? I can't respond emotionally because, well, I can. And there is like a, a yes that emerges internally, but it's not like we romanticize neurotypicality uh, or we, we romanticize neurodivergence out of a lot of like spiritual knowing because spiritual knowing is informed by so many different things right and you know as someone who is who has cptsd who is also neurodivergent um you know if i say hell yes to something like this and i just jump in it's not um it doesn't always honor me because the feeling of excitement um, feels different. There's, a, and it's, you know, you don't have to have everything mapped out, but there's a certain stability that you have to feel within yourself, which is grounding. Yes, all of that. But it's just, I think, understanding and having, again, patience with yourself. Um, if, you know, you, if your hell yes looks very different than other people's, because leaps, you know, um, healing for me has included, it's not about not trusting yourself and it's not about, you know, not thinking twice. I think that it's a deeply, um, intimate thing for someone to say, huh, I see that that's how you've needed to react. And that's kind of been like a way that you've not just kept yourself safe, but kept your world stable. I'm going to honor that. Um, you know, I'm going to learn more about that. I'm going to be curious. So it's just kind of, kind of having that conversation with yourself too. Cause I feel like there's, um, there's a way that this honors your truth. This honors your knowing this honors, you know, um, the space within you that recognizes that is like a recognition space.
strength. And there it is. That's your, that, the, the, the strength card, I want to say like, this is your strength, but I feel like this is more so how you connect with the, the fire within you. And it's not, I don't think it's coincidental that there's a two of cups here and a rose in that uh, lion's mouth. Could be some Leo energy there, but what I'm getting more is that it connects you so much deeply, so much more deeply to yourself. Queen of Wands energy to, to the strength card is a depth of fire within you. You know, bookending the Ace of Swords, that tells me that this is a way of connecting with your truth, connecting with your power, your confidence, right? And that's part of that serenity prayer. That's what kicked it off, right? Um you know, I, it's, it's escaping me, honestly. Um, but I, I think that's how you kind of find your joy. That's sort of, it's so interesting. Like, I love when spirit does this, right? So it's almost like it kicks off this sort of storyline of like, how you rise from the ashes, how you rise from the ashes, what the ashes are, is irrelevant. All the, the only thing you need to know about it is the wisdom to know the difference, right? The wisdom to know the difference between information coming from the outside and what's actually happening within you and what you want to do with it, right? That's the difference. And that's the, the difference between, but also the difference that you can make, right? The difference between something, this and this, or this and that. Um, but then we also think about the difference in terms of what you can do with it. So um, that is magnificent energy, my friends. Uh, let's cap this off here. I'll read from this deck. Spirit, what message do you have just to close out this reading, please? Message to close out this reading. Love speaks to me all through the day. Yeah. When you don't know what to do, focus on love. I almost feel like that's this sort of, um, this diving deep in this decompression chamber piece, right? So let me read this to you here. When you don't know what to do, focus on love. Love is an infinite intelligence that will always help you if you let it. Yeah, love speaks to me all through the day. So, and then we'll get to reading this part here. <clears throat> with love <clears throat> and also just in case whoever needed to know that's what was on the top underneath the other card um be open to miracles today you will experience a miracle each time you decide to let life love you a little more a little bit more than before beautiful okay dearest you did you know that when you stop fighting and accept everything exactly as it is right now this is so true of this card miracles start to happen holy shit okay <laughs> There's a lot of miracles. Miracles start to happen. There's a freedom in this kind of radical acceptance. Let go of unrealistic expectations and see things as they really are, not how you'd like them to be. You'll be surprised at how everything seems to fall into place. When you refuse to accept things, life gets messy. You act messy and your world stays in chaos, tension, and disarray. But don't try to force a change or manipulate circumstances. Instead, learn about what is in front of you and face it with your eyes fully open. Then you can decide. Stay or go, sink or swim, move or stay still. Acceptance is the key to freedom and opens the door to real opportunities waiting to be discovered. Set yourself and others free. Loving you so much, always and forever. Beautiful. That is your reading, my friends. This was a great way to kick off the week. Happy Monday. Uh, and uh, if this resonated, give it a like and subscribe. But as always, wherever this finds you, on the time space continuum, morning, afternoon, or night, I hope it finds you very, very well, my friends. Take care.